does not believe, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. A fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's appointed unto man to die once, and after this, the judgment. You're going to have to give an account for all your words, all your deeds, all, for all your whole life, including every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. The Bible says, fear God, for this is the whole duty of every person. For God will bring your works into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. So, I come out here to warn you that if you are aborting babies, you need to repent. Turn from that wicked, wicked work, that murder, abortion in the name of choice. How disgustingly evil can you get, America? Disgustingly evil abortion is. Same with uh, homosexuality. That's not love. That is not love. Homosexuality is of the devil. It is not love. It's, it's hating your neighbor. I don't have to get into all the medical consequences of homosexuality. Look it up in a medical textbook. It's very well known. I'm going to preach God's word tonight that says no homosexual will enter into the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicator, nor drunkard, nor liar, nor thief will enter into the kingdom of God. For if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation. To those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul that does evil. There is no partiality with God. He's going to judge you. You're going to have to give an account. And the scary thing is, you will have no excuse. And without Jesus, without your faith in Jesus, you're doomed. You're doomed and destined for hellfire. Jesus talked about hell plenty. He talked about hell more than he did heaven. Jesus said that the place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Horrible place. And once you're in hell, there's no getting out. This is your second chance. Each day, each breath, you've been given so many, America, given so many, day after day. Oh, don't take it for granted. Don't take God's mercy for granted. He's given you plenty of it. Today is the day of salvation. Humble yourself in the sight of God, and He will lift you up. God says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and He will have mercy on him. And to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. That means you have many, many years of sin on your record that can be washed away. God says, come, let us reason together. So your sins be as red as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. So they be red as crimson, they'll be white as wool. Your participation is required, though. God has done his part. Jesus suffering, bled, and dying on that cruciform.
of cross and horrible cross for you out of love. Seriously, for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible says also some other things. Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord and do not the things which I say? Jesus said, Many will come to him in that day saying, Lord, Lord, and will not enter in. Only those that do the will of his Father who is in heaven will enter into the kingdom of God. Many will come to him saying, Lord, Lord, and he's going to reply to many of them, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness, you who practice lawlessness, those continuing in sin. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. The Bible says that whoever says that they know God and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's an important point, people. I'm going to repeat it. Whoever says that they know God and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That is a Bible verse. Praise God for giving us the Bible, his word, a, a, a firm foundation. Jesus said, Whoever does his saying and keeps them, it is he that builds, like a, someone that builds his house on the rock, that when the wind blew against the house and the floods came, the house stands. But he who does not keep his saying, he who does not keep his commandments, is like the foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And when the floods come and the winds beat a bit that house, great is its fall. Speaking of foolish men, the Bible says that the fool says in his heart, there is no God. That is what the fool says. Very clear by creation. Very clear. Look around. The tree. Your very own body. It testifies of your creator. It testifies of his invisible attributes. God is good. God is merciful. He's given us much grace. By grace we have been saved through faith, and this not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God. God dying on that cross, Jesus Christ, that is the great gift. What are you going to do with God's gift for you? Are you going to trample this good news by continuing in sin, trampling Jesus' blood, counting it as no major, no major thing? Or are you going to turn, turn from your wicked ways, your selfishness, and live for your maker? God deserves your obedience. He is he's worthy of all glory, all honor, and all power. For he created all things, and by his will they exist and were created. He's a just God, and he's angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. Oh, he's patient, though. He's patient. But there's coming a day when the patience will end. There's coming a day, judgment day, when you're going to have to give an account and you won't have any excuse. There's coming
coming a day when Jesus is coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on those who do not obey his good news, who counted his blood as not good enough to stop sinning. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and do not the things which I say? Oh, people, Jesus said, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. You keeping his commandments does not wash away the sin in your past. Only faith in what Jesus did to do that. But God expects holiness. God expects you to love him back. He loves you first. Now you are to love Sin. him back. Give it to him. The Bible says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. The Bible says, we must abide in him to be saved. Jesus said, for lawlessness will abound, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Whoever abides in Jesus does not sin. Whoever abideth in Jesus, Jesus sinneth not. Abortion, evil, drunkenness, evil, homosexuality, evil. Sex outside of marriage, evil, lying, stealing, selfishness, pride, humble yourself. God says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and we, he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Whipped over and over, having the flesh on his back ripped off out of love for you. He, he, he definitely demonstrated love. Scarcely for a righteous man, one will die. Yet perhaps for a good man, some would dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So here's the issue. We all deserve hell. deserve hell because of our sin. Sin. The Winnipeg Jets sin, are going to hell. Sin leads to hell, hell, hell. I don't want anyone to go there, so I come out here and lift up Jesus to you. Lift up his body work on that cross to you. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to count your opportunity for granted? You could die tonight. Even to young people, you could die tonight. So many car crashes and fatalities. It doesn't matter your age, it can be your turn tonight. There is no immunity. It's time to surrender to your Creator. Does not believe 